Okay, let me just welcome those of you that are here tonight, and uh, particularly those of you that are on line, Facebook line. If you please, to the book of Revelation, chapter 6. I think it's important that we study this book. Okay. We take question and answers, and I don't know if any of you could watch to see any question that comes in on the Facebook page. If you could pass the questions on to me then I will be able to, you'll read them out loud and I will answer them. Okay? Revelation chapter 6. You got it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Verse 7. When you open to the fourth seal, okay, it's the fourth seal. When you had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice the fourth beast, say, come and see. <coughs> and I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And the name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. When he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree cast it for untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. The heavens departed as a scroll, and it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, the great men and the rich men, and the chief captains of the mighty men, and every bond man, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? Just by way of a recap, let me pray first. Father, I ask tonight that you open our hearts. You have given us these words that we should read. You also spoke of the time when you said, He that readeth it must fear and tremble. Tonight, we ask that you would open our hearts, that these words that are being broadcast would get into the hands of the people who need it most. That the fear of God would descend on us as a church. 
as a people of God, that Lord, we'll get ourselves ready for the rapture. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory to God. Let us harness our minds right now and stick to what we are here for, please. The book of Revelation is the last book of the New Testament. Believers, it is a prophetic book that describes the end times or the final events of the history of earth. It's the only book in the Bible that pronounced a blessing on the readers. Revelation 1 verse 3. Can somebody read it out for me please? And someone has turned to Revelation 22 verses 18 and 19. Someone read Revelation 1 verse 3 for me. Microphone is here. Blessed is he that writes it. Brother Howard, Brother Howard, you have to use the mic. Revelation 1 verse 3. Blessed is he that writes it. And they that hear the word of the prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Okay, thank you. Blessed is he that readeth. It pronounces a blessing on the person who read and hear the word. Assuming that some people can see, we'll have microphones and phones to read it for us. And we not only hear, see, read, but we keep the things that are written therein. Revelation 22, verses 18 and 19. For I testify unto every man, for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of the book, of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book. And if any man shall take away the words of the book, of this prophecy, God shall take away its part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Okay, so God promised not only a blessing on the reader, but a cursing is pronounced on the person who seek to water down, adulterate this word. Amen? Amen? Now also, as you read through this book, the book is full of symbolism and imagery. And it has been interpreted in many different, different ways by different people. However, the Bible doesn't need an interpreter. The Bible interprets itself. The Bible is to be declared as what God said. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, in this book, we find four horse men. A white horse, a red horse, a uh, uh, pale horse, and what is the next one? A black horse. Amen. One of the most famous passages in Revelation is a description of the four horsemen of the Apocalypse. These four horsemen are often interpreted as representing the first in the white horse, war, a conquest. On the red horse, war. On the third horse, famine, and then, and then the fourth, death. What do we understand? Before we go to that, praise God. The horse rider that we're dealing with is death and pains, or hell, his companion. You will notice that death, this is the only horse of all the others have a name. His name is Death. And what it says is hell, follow him. Death will take, take the body while hell takes the soul of those who do not know Jesus. So the two billions work in concert 
with each other. Check the text again. Death and hell followed him. The man that sat on the horse was death and he was followed by hell. I'm going to show you some powerful scriptures to, to, for us to understand. What do we understand by the term the pale horse? Anybody? Please, you have to speak up. Just raise your hands and we get the microphone to you. What do you understand by the term the pale horse? Believers, we need to be serious about the word of God today. Amen. Now the Greek word used for pale horse, pale, means greenish. The horse rider is death. As I said, with hades or hell following him as his companion. The horse rider, glory to God. It is interesting how these two work um, together. They work symbiotically. Symbiotically means the two things working together. As death takes the body. And who is connected to the death who takes the body which is connected to the ground. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 20. Can someone read that for me please? Because the scripture gives an explanation. We are dealing with death almost weekly or monthly in our city. People we know. It's important that the church provide answers to people, even in their funeral services. And some of us are telling people that we don't want our funeral service to be, service to be long. We need to make sure that I want to stipulate that when God called me home, there must be a sermon and an altar call at my funeral service. Because it's about reaching people. Samson killed many Philistines. But in the day, on the day Samson died, Samson took down the lords of the Philistines and thousands of people who were there making sport of him. Hello, somebody. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 20 and 21. Quickly, please. All go onto one place. Microphone, please. <clears throat> Verse 20 reads, All go onto one place, all are of the dust, mm -hmm. and all turn to dust again. Mm -hmm. 21. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward, downward to the hurt? Okay. So you'll notice that man is dust. Mm -hmm. And dust, he comes from the ground and he will be going back to the ground. Amen. In chapter 12, verse 7. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7. Can someone read that, please? Come on, brethren. Hold on, microphone. Yeah. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, mm -hmm. and the spirit shall return unto God in David. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> the dust return to the ground, and the spirit return to God who gave. Amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you will notice the. You will have a question. The part, this part of the tribulation with four-figure riding horses is one of the most spookier or uncannier part of the end times prophecy. The four horsemen of the apocalypse appear to um, unanimously portray four disastrous occurrences that will take place after the rapture of the church. Last week, we saw as the third seal was broken, a black horse appeared whose rider had a, had a pair of balance in his right hand. He was commanded, he gave the command to measure 
the wheat and the barley. And it was, we saw how expensive barley and wheat was. You will notice during this time, the same money that a man will work for a day will be the same amount you will pay for just a measure of barley. You can imagine when the scripture said the, the father will turn against the son and the son against the father and the mother against the husband and the husband against the mother. I recall being in a communist country during the time of the Soviet Union and to my surprise I stayed at home in Yugoslavia and I was asked not to read my Bible in the home, not to open it, not to pray publicly. I lie on my bed and pray because the woman feared that her husband would report her. Are you following me, somebody? Yes. We need to take the scripture yes. seriously. Yes. Amen. Amen. She begged me not to pray, kneel down to pray. The Antichrist being responsible for the famine in chapter 13, verse 7. I want you to just read chapter 13, verse 7. And let me also say to you, Revelation chapter 6, the entire chapter span six will span seven years. Whatever you're reading in Revelation 7, 8, 9, 10, right down to 19, can be brought back. Example, when you see it says that the great men the rich men, the bond men, I'm coming to you, um, um, run to the rocks. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? That part is connected to Revelation chapter 20. Hello, somebody? Yeah. Yeah. I want you to quickly just turn there. I, so it's written in parentheses. In other words, part of it belongs to, it's going into sequence, but it's coming back. So people are confused, but you don't need to be confused. Praise God. Now you will notice in chapter 20, an angel came down from heaven, having the keys of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and laid hands upon the dragon, cast him into the bottomless pit. Believers, this is where the, the thousand years will start. Amen. That's the end of the seven years. And this is where, when they saw what was happening, it says in chapter 20, verse 11, I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, glory to God whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no more place for them. And I saw the dead, the dead, small and great, I'm coming to you, Jasmine, standing before God, and the books were open. So when you read in Revelation chapter 6, I, they, they, were, they were running to the rocks. It's because God appeared on the scene. They were, they were looking for death because if the people who don't fear God miss the rapture, believers, glory to God, and can't stand the tribulation, give up on their faith because some people can't even go. The Bible said to God, said to the, the prophet, if you can't run with the footmen, how are you going to run with the horsemen? Yeah. And when you see people don't care too much about their faith now, when the starvation take them and they can't buy and they can't, they will find it hard. Yeah. So let's look at Revelation chapter 13, verse 17 from the page. What did I say again? Revelation 13, verse 17. Glory to God. Verse 17. And no one could buy or sell anything without that mark, which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. Okay. So believers who feel that they will be able to go 
through the tribulation and it's going to be easy. They won't be able to buy or sell. So therefore, if you're not able to buy or sell, some of us can't even fast. But some of us have bad stomach. Are you following me? Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Believers, it will be hard for people. Now, notice the authority given to these, this beast and his companion. They were given authority over a fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, to kill with famine, by plague, and by the wild animals of the earth. You see how people are going to die? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you're a Christian, you, you got a mind, Jasmine? Mm. Yeah, take a mic, please. No, no, I'll just ask them. Okay. You, you don't want to ask the question again? Okay. All right. Um, if you are a, a Christian, you won't be able to buy or sell. Let me show you how it's working. They're moving things to a cashless society. Mm, yes. If you want your checkbook, they will tell you every single lie in the bank. Because the government have forced, has forced them to do away with the check. I think it's in Denmark. 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 The government forced them to get rid of checks. Yes. And they have the lies that they must repeat to the people. Mm -mm. Some people are, are, are protesting against it. But they are forcing us to go through a cashless society. Yeah, yeah. Coming to you, Sister Angela. Right now, Brother Jim, if you are in Manchester, your phone is set up. That if you are in Manchester, I was surprised when I was staying with Sister Daphne, when I first came. Someone told me exactly where I was. The address from America. They told me exactly where I was. And I realized that there are apps that can track you. Yes. We are able to turn off the apps now. Yeah, but there are certain apps on your phone. When they turn it on and put on and it, lock it. So if you are in Manchester or in Scotland and you went and you get petrol, you're using your check, your card. It's registered. It's locked in. So when you move from Manchester and you reach Birmingham and you went and buy, you won't buy some more petrol. Mm -hmm. They know exactly where you are. Yeah. And when you stop to buy two packets of crisps, cheese and onions. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Believers, you're not following me. You don't realize how serious it is. How serious it is. As I say, uh, so you have to use a phone, please. It's a Hello. tracking mechanism. It's a tracking mechanism. So it's already known how to track us. Yeah. You remember that the, during the lockdown, I think it was um, Boris Johnson gave a speech to the United Nations. These were his words. You can run, but you can't hide. He said because the bollards will track you. The bollards, you know those bollards that carry turn left, turn right? Mm -hmm. The traffic light, the street lights. Everything. Have you noticed how often sometimes you're going on Bur to Birmingham, how the, they're pulling up the road, pulling up the road and yeah. doing this thing? Yeah. Yeah. The same road was done a few weeks, a few months before. Yeah. It's the same road. They are putting in new system. Yeah. AI and IA. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Believers, the Antichrist um, system is already at work. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Christians need to know. Amen. We need to be prepared. The song that we used to sing, draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, Amen. to the cross where thou hast died. Some sinners, you warn them, they just look at you and laugh. It's a spirit of Noah's generation is on them. There is a spirit that blind people. Hear what the scripture said. If our gospel, I believe it's um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. It said, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, of whom the God of this world has blinded their minds. Come on, church. Amen. Glory to God. Believers, I can't do nothing more than warn us. Warn you and warn myself yes. to get ready. Amen. I can't get you to be more serious, praise God, than you want to be. Amen. Amen. These horsemen were given authority over a fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, famine, plague, and wild animal. Naturally, when food supplies dwindle and wars break out, death will fall. The pale horse has the power of famine, plague, and to kill by the sword and by the wild beasts. That's what it says in verse 8 of Revelation. When he had opened the fifth, the fourth seal, seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say come and see remember i told you the greek term means go it's a permit permission had to be given amen and i looked john said and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death that's the only horse as the name and him that followed hallelujah was hell Power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword. Amen. Sickness and famine often break out as a result of warfare. And this horse stands as no exception. Notice the authority of God in all of this. And I looked and behold a pale horse. His name was death and hell followed him. And power was given, power was given. Yeah. Believers, there are two powers that can be released. One is from God, and one is from the devil. Amen. Every accident that takes place on earth, that's why believers can meet the devil in prayer Amen. and cancer death. Demons can tell you which crossroad. Whether it's an oil tanker or a truck or a vehicle. They can tell you about a person who's coming to attack you. Yes. Hello? Amen. Hallelujah. I remember when I first got filled with the Holy Spirit. It was a new thing, Nikki, because... I didn't really want to get it where I, I drop on the floor. I was like Eric. You know, I don't want to drop on the floor and roll and ball and all that. I was also, the morning when I got filled, I was determined, as you have heard me said over and over, I was holding on to the platform because that other ox, ox minister carpet, is that what they call it? Yeah. And you remember them, they're good, but they, they pick up dust. And I didn't want to dust up my good, good suit, my black suit. But believers, when I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, was when I let go and stopped worrying about the carpet and my suit and how I'm going to look when I fall down. I was determined. I said, God, I'm not leaving here this morning without the Holy Ghost. When I got filled, Brother Eric, I was on the floor. Not only that, I was falling under the chair. You have to be moving on the chair out of the way. But you know what happened? Just when I was prophesying, glory to God, that the, I remember the prophecy I gave. I brought a man, not a brother, a man was coming to the church. 
He had a knife, police and ambulance was coming to the church. And the brother that took me home with my because my clothes was in a mess. The brother said, Brother Beeson, you're sure the Lord told you those things? Because you gotta be careful it's not self. That brother dumped my prophetic ministry. Because I went back to church and was very careful what I say. I was listening out for God. Then I spoke without knowing what I was saying. I heard what God said. And when you're operating in the prophetic, you don't need to hear. You open your mouth and speak. Amen. Amen. That brother had an impact on my life. And plus he wasn't even filled with the Holy Ghost. The people who don't have the experience sometimes can tell you foolishness. Yeah. Glory to God. Now, it did happen. It did happen. Amen. The, a man came to the church, just as I said, in the striped suit. Mm -hmm. He knocked down one of the sister, and apparently the sister died outside of the church. Mm -hmm. And as the brethren picked her up and carried her into the church at the altar and prayed for her, and she came back to life. Police and ambulance turned up there. Amen. But by that time, he had damaged me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, the fourth part of earth came under attack. War on all fronts, was on all fronts. Now, if there are 8 billion, 78 million, 197,506 people currently on earth. This is the figure. Now, remember some continent have more people than some. But if you divide this in four, what does that mean? It means over 2 million, 2 billion people, that's 2,000 million people will be affected by death, war, and hunger. Oh, now, most of us can't understand this. Look in Google. Look on the news and check how devastating and, and, uh, uh, nuclear, not, they have not been using nuclear from, from the yeah, Nakasaki and Hiroshima. But we're talking about devastating um, weapons, missiles, mm -hmm. that can flatten a whole city. Yeah. Glory to God. Imagine the fear that caused and the panic that caused in the hearts of people. Believers, when the church is raptured, mm. that very day will be one of the most devastating judgment on earth. If you think of church being empty, church is going to be filled. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. After the rapture. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Now, notice the, the, the four horsemen come already. There are people who are telling us that it happened. Historians have noted that the 14th century saw a number of events that could be seen as echoing the four horsemen of the apocalyptic. Believers, this point in Revelation on the four or sin is so important that they have made a film, a film about the four or sin. There is, the, am I right? Yeah. The four or sin, the four or sin. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. they have made a movie. In the time of the Crusaders, when there was a series of wars between Christian and Muslims, Glory to God. It is seen by many historians as representing the white horse. But believers know because God had already shown us what will precede the four horsemen being released. In Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 
This is what it says. Check it out. Because when I became a Christian, Eric, you could not call a scripture and I didn't turn to it. It said only, only he who now let it, will let. Mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Jasmine, find it for me, please. Glory to God. It's not a long chapter. Only you now let it will let until it is taken away. The church, the Antichrist cannot come. Verse 7. Read it for me, please. You got a microphone there? Pass the microphone. The mystery of iniquity. There is something mysterious about what is happening on the ground. The mystery of iniquity is already at work. Only he who now let it will let. It means that it cannot happen onto the church. Read on. The church is the salt of the earth. Amen. And any time the church is taken, all hell will break loose. Amen. Glory to God. The it's in the time of the Crusaders, when I said that there are people who are telling us that it's gone. The 100 years, years war, which was a long and bloody conflict between England and France, was also seen as representing the war of the Red Horse. The bubonic plague, which killed millions of people, could be seen as representing the, the famine and the pestilence. That's not what the word of God is indicating. And the great famine in 1315 to 1317, which also caused the widespread death and suffering, they said it could be representing death. Now, believers, can I say to you, God gave us indicators to warn us. But all what is happening, there is preparation for the Antichrist to come. Because after the Atlantic, there's a newspaper in that called the Atlantic Constitution. Many years ago, they developed a, a, what do you call it, typeset. And they were going to use it. And the CEO refused to have free the typeset. He said, we want to use it only the day when the rapture and the church is gone. Amen. That typeset is sealed, waiting for it. Yeah. If you are a trumpeter in glory, I can't imagine how those angels are ready, testing their trumpet. Glory to God. Blowing and preparing for the day when the rapture and the, the, the Bible says when the trumpet of the Lord. You will notice the amount of angels, the amount of trumpets, the amount of woes. That is in the book of Revelation. Amen. Glory to God. Are you following me somebody? Amen. Glory to God. I want you and I to get a great a, a grasp of what is happening. Because God wants the church to be prepared. I said it's the only horseman, horseman with a name. His name is Death. Notice who followed him. Hell. Followed behind him. Oh, no. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hades is the God of the underworld, the place of death. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to check a few scriptures. Glory to God. The word also means a pit, which is used for the place of the dead. Psalm 6, verse 5. Somebody find Psalm 6, verse 5. Another person find Isaiah 53, Isaiah 23, verse 8. Okay, where are the microphones, please? Let me just see the hands who have the microphone. One. Come on, please. Okay, get, get the microphone. Eric, you're Isaiah 25, verse 8. 
Jim, you are Hosea 13, verse 14. Glory to God. Um, Alec, you are Psalm 6, verse 5. Take Psalm 6, verse 5 from him, please. Go on, whoever have a microphone, because it's up there, the scriptures are up there. Psalm 6, verse 5. For in death there is no rem remembrance of thee. In the grave you shall give thee thanks. In death there is no remembrance of thee. Of thee. Mm -hmm. In the grave, you shall give thee who shall give thanks. Mm -hmm. Believers in death. All what we do on earth. Amen. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 23, verse 8, Brother Eric. 25. 25, verse 8. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from death. Jesus, faces. hold on, Brother Eric, I'm coming back to you. Jesus will do the opposite of this man on the white, on the pale horse. Read again, Brother Eric. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. You remember how the souls of the people under the house were how they will die? Starvation, torture, tears. They were crying. How long? Read again for me, please, Brother Eric. This is a comfort from God's word. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. Amen. The rebuke of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. Amen. Amen. What a powerful thing from the Bible. <coughs> you know, my God, believers, you can have a bank card and a passport. It's not as powerful as the Bible. No. And yet we don't read it. Some of us play it, but I can tell you this play or no play. You don't grasp because when it's playing, everything else is coming around you. Because sometimes we have the TV on, sometimes we have a phone call. Trust me, I'm telling for everybody, including me. That's why I have to set time to read the word. No, now, notice the term hell followed. This is a harrowing term. H O R R O W I N G. This is a harrowing term. Let me see if I can get the H in. Praise God. I got it? <laughs> Amen. But when I'm talking to Google, it just tell me there's nothing in the camera finds such a word. And I have to say, Howard. Howard. Because they say I missed the H. Believers, death is his name. Mm. The pain horse. But hell follow me. God knows, hallelujah. There is a gentleman I loved so much. I was privileged to go to his mother's funeral. 1976, I believe it was. From 1962, I've been to a funeral. I've never gone back to another one. Since until, until 76. I was forced to leave the building. Brother Shirts, and that was the greatest thing he had done for me. He told the drivers, because this was my always, always what I've done. If they're going away for the weekend, I would go into the, the van, the first van, and jump on. I said, oh, I forgot somebody, something. Somebody else can take my seat. That was the second one. But I'm not going in the second one. I always leave a door open in the bowling alley room. And that I could go a window. I can climb through the window and go back to the building. And sometimes I was in the building on my own all weekend. All of us live there and it's gone. It's like a ghost town. And Brother Shirts warned the drivers, make sure if George come out of the van or the minibus, in the first bus, make sure that he's in the next bus. And I went. This lady that died, she had nine children. Most of them were pastors or they married to pastor's wife. And I remember after all these years, I remember the sermon, the line of the sermon the guy preached. Before Mutiak gets Tobin hand, 
See, Ima sat right in here. Before my mother died, she always said to me, don't cry. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, that day was like the cloud was dancing. When I listened to the son preaching the sermon, mm -hmm. glory to God. Are you hearing me, somebody? Amen. Glory to God. And I realized what the scripture said, blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. Right. Because today, hallelujah, Sister Barbara, we are having all sorts of doves. And I'm pleased, don't misunderstand me. Nothing wrong with the doves letting them loose. I've seen big funerals I conducted left here and gone to Nottingham to conduct where the guy turn up in the, the coffin turn up with the guy with a massive, expensive casket. And he was being cremated. That's a metal casket that couldn't be burned. So from the church, they took him back to the funeral director, put him into a, a, a wooden one and carried him to burn. They have 24 doves going back. And the doves going back to their owner. They, that's the same love we're using all the time. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And believers, and we make so much fuss about the coffin and the funeral service. And we are not prepared for death. Amen. But when that same man that I was talking about, I think he was a some of the sweet, he wasn't a, a pastor, he, he was one of the sons that weren't a pastor. And I remember one evening where I think he was coming from Stuttgart. Coming to pass Schondorf, coming to pass Kremenkru. There were some guys, Germans tend to drive fast because some part of Germany, if you're driving at 100 miles per hour, somebody just passed you about, you know? That's a road where you can go 200 and odd miles, eight lanes. Praise God. It's called the Autobahn. But some of the kids do drive even in the villages like they're, they're crazy. This guy was overtaking a car. He wasn't a Christian. And he overtook the car, not seeing the other car that was coming. And he got a head on collision. The, the front of the car trapped his feet on the pedal. And the car exploded. Gusso was coming. And when the car crashed and the people were coming trying to get the guy out, he begged them because his feet were trapped. He asked them to cut his feet off. They could not do it before the, the, the car exploded. Gusso, for two long weeks, Gusso stayed in his room and his flat didn't come out. He had never heard somebody cry when they're going to hell. Believers, oh glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Bishop, yes, sir. You didn't read Hosea 13, verse 14, did you? Read, read it for me, please. I said, Jane. Yeah. Yes, sir. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. Mm hmm. I will redeem them from death. Mm -hmm. O oh, death, I will be your plagues. Mm -hmm. O oh, grave, I will be your destruction. Mm -hmm. Pity is hidden from my eyes. Amen. Glory to God. Take that word pity from my eyes. Thank you. I'm coming to some more scriptures. That young man, because most of us, we think death uh, in Jamaica, they have um, these things where, you know, the dark. When you go to the, the moor, you see the dawn, just sit up with his, his hat. He's dead, you know. A cigar in his mouth or a split. Hello? And he just sit in the dawn and the, the, the foyer of the... So when you come in, you see, and the boys think that's how the dawn man died. Dressing his fancy suit and his gear. And we glorify death. Believers, I want you to understand this. When I read this today, something hit my heart. Hell followed him. I'm going to come to the text. Brother Howard, go ahead. You have a question. Yeah. 
Oh. No, it's one prayer that just read. It says, I mean, it says pity. Pity. But in this King James, it says, repentance shall be hidden from thine eyes. Repentance shall be hidden from thine eyes. From the eyes. Because when a person rebels against God, there comes a time where God, because if you if you blaspheme, pardon me, against the Holy Spirit, who's able to save you, if you cuss off the Holy Ghost, that doesn't mean that God can save you, but you must repent. But there are some people that cuss and blaspheme the Holy Ghost yeah. till there's no way for them to repent. Amen? Amen. So, even that God will withhold. Proverbs 1.21, I believe it says this, because I call and you refuse. I stretch forth my hand and no man regard. You mocked at my counsel. You laugh. Therefore, he said, God will laugh at you. Can you imagine over 2 billion people, 200 million people, a fourth part of the earth? will die. That's why church, we cannot we cannot be so comfortable that we can't pray. Two billion people at one time will descend into heaven. Hear what Isaiah 5 verse 14 and 16 listen what it says. Glory to God. Listen what it says. Therefore hell on that day, as enlarged her board, when the scales is released, and hoping her mouth without measure. Are you? Am, am I talking to somebody? Yeah. And their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoices and laughs at God will descend into hell. Come on, church. Amen. That's why it behoves every one of us. Don't let nothing stop you from going to heaven. Forgive. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. Forgive. Amen. It said, therefore, hell. It said, a quarter of the world's population will descend. Death and hell follow them. Death and hell is companion follow them. Serious business. Hell. Hell is a place where there is no righteous person. Hell is a place Jesus said there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth even if you don't have any. Amen. Trust me. Glory to God. You chew your gum. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want you to understand because it's a when it's Jesus said hallelujah. He called upon us to repent. Because in hell, there is no repentance. Yeah. In Luke chapter 16, can I talk with you? Yeah. In Luke chapter 16, 16, where the rich man had died. Mm -hmm. The rich man was sumptuously closed. If it was today, he would have a Lamborghini, a, a BMW, eight series, glory to God, hallelujah. He would have a Porsche, 925, glory to God, and all the others, <coughs> Bentley, Park, and the Bible said he was sumptuously closed daily. Even the man at his gate, he couldn't even see it. But when he died, no, notice this man of decorum. Can you imagine he walked like he's walking on hot brick? And he died. Lazarus died. And the Bible said this man was buried. Yeah. It mentioned nothing about Lazarus. He said only angels came for him. Yeah. Because when the saints die, angels have to escort them. Yeah. Look at Jude. Angel escort Moses. Satan came to take him. As the angels of the Lord rebuked the Satan. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. There is an angel that encamp round about us. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Are you hearing me, somebody? Hallelujah. Ah, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But in hell, the Bible said, he lifted up his eyes. Yeah. He was dead. Yeah. But in hell, he lifted
lifted up his eyes and he could see far from hell to heaven. Because that's a part of the punishment. That's what you missed. That's what you missed. That's what you missed. The devil trick you, the devil fool you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jason, you got your mind? Glory to God. Quickly, please. Come on, Sister Janus, pass the mic. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. Um, go ahead. Maybe he said, in hell you can see as far as heaven. In heaven you can see as far as hell. A very good question. I said in hell, in the place where Divy was, the Bible said there was a great gulf between them. That's what Jesus, it was Jesus who told us how. Jesus spoke as if he knew the man. He said there was a certain man. There was a certain, he used that term several times to speak of somebody he knew. There was a certain man. And there was another man that Jesus knew. Wherever the Bible said angel escorted Lazarus, the poor man to glory. The, the man, the rich man was buried. Nobody escorted him apart from he was commanded to go to hell. But the Bible said in hell, he lifted his eyes and he saw. He was such a decorum. He had decorum. But do you know people like that? Hello, how are you? In hell, my man bawled like crazy. He hollered that even over the other side, the gulf, the chasm between the two. You're, I'm coming to your question. He saw. Now, in heaven, I can tell you this there will be no weeping. Glory to God. Because all compassion. All the begging, the, the imploring of us begging a soul to come to Jesus. It's compassion that leads us to do it. All that will be gone. Because from the moment we touch heaven, there are no tear ducts. Because Jesus wiped it away. Amen. 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 Glory to God. There will be no weeping, there will be no waiting. So Jasmine, the question you asked is a brilliant one. I've never been asked that before. Will they see from heaven to hell? No, no, because it will be, that's not where we are going. We're in paradise. We're in paradise. Praise God. We with Jesus. We'll see Jesus. We'll see our loved ones that have gone before. We'll be having such great time that we have no time to look down in heaven. It's not our portion. No. All we will see is glory. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. Yes. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoices shall descend into it. And the mean man shall be brought down and the mighty man shall be humbled and the highs of the lofty shall be humbled but the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Amen. I told you before of the time I went to this funeral service. It was the brother of one of her sisters. And I know she spent a lot of, she was a minister in our church. She spent a lot of time talking to her. Preparing him, trying to prepare him for the coming of the Lord. And I remember she came to me, she was so sad. She said, Pastor, I asked him, Can I read the scripture? And he said, No. Can I call the pastor to come in and pray with you? He said, No. Would you like me to play some of the gospel song? Because you know we can play it on our phone. He said, No, you don't need it. And at the funeral service, he was a dancer. At the funeral service, I heard the pastor saying, talking about how his ability to dance, and he is now dancing with Jesus. I said, lying spirit. I was shocked because, Brother Jim, I thought everybody heard me. Lying spirit. So at the gym where I went to, I went the next morning and I called all the guys. The gym was in different parts. 
And I went all around. I called everybody up the top. I didn't even know some of them would come. Paulina was surprised when I saw them came. And it was like, I felt like I was in church. And I told them what happened. I said, some of you, when you see me, you always try to hide. Because you feel I'm going to tell you about God. But I want to tell you what happened yesterday. And I told them. I said, the guy had never wanted prayer. He had never wanted a song. He had never wanted the Bible to be read. I said, and the preacher said, you could see him dancing with Jesus. I said, I lie from the pit of hell. I said, I would not like to hear him bawl. And he stepped out of time, of hurt. I wouldn't like to hear him bawl. I wouldn't like to hear him bawl. Because he's in hell. Glory to God. And you think I'm joking. It's serious. I told him, I said, I would not like to hear him when he stepped mm. out of time into eternity and to meet the God that he rejects. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm. Right. I said, gentlemen, that was the shortest sermon I've ever preached, Brother Jim. Mm. Because I was so glad to see them. Mm. And I was frightened that I would keep them. And I said to them, I would not like to see him born. I hear him born. Because my friend, when he saw that guy and they couldn't cut off his leg in the car for two weeks, he was so troubled. He needed help. Because it's the first time he saw somebody descending to him. The Bible said in Psalms 9 verse 17, the wicked shall be turned Driven, cast by the gravity of their pernicious ways. Their depravity, the prey ways. Into hell. The wicked shall be turned. Wicked is not because a man killed, because you can commit 20 murder and repent and God forgive you. When other people are condemning you, God have mercy upon your soul. Amen. 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 But the wicked person is the person who actually rejects Jesus. Yeah. The very gift of life. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you hearing me somebody? Yeah. That's the wicked person. Yeah. He's so wicked that God gave his only son. Yeah. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Yeah. This is love. That a man laid down his life for his friend. Amen. And that man is so wicked. We are, I am, I was. All the time I reject Jesus. But the wicked shall be turned into hell. Turn here is a powerful term. Yeah. Nikki, he's not just directed. The whole gravity of hell. And all the nations that forget God. Mm. As Brother Howard Ryan read, or Brother Jim, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. Mm. Oh, death, I will be thy plague. Yes. Oh, grave, yes. I will be thy destruction. Yes. Repentance shall be hidden from thine eyes. Mm. Repentance will be hidden on thine eyes. What a thing. What a thing. When he had opened the fifth seed, ten minutes and I closed, I saw under the heart of the souls of them, praise God, I saw under the heart the altar, the souls of them, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That were slain for the word of God, for the testament. Come on, church. There is a song. We used to sing. I'm the only person who remembered it. Press along, we are pilgrim. Press on. They were slain for the word of God and for their testimony, which they held. Notice they held it, they kept it. 
They cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? White robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest for a little season unto their fellow servants, also of their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Amen. You hear me, somebody? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Amen. This is what they say. How long dost thou not judge and avenge our blood? The fifth seal in the book of Revelation is a picture of the martyred victims who were slain. Some of them, many, have been slain during the previous seal, the fourth seal. You remember the pale horse and the red horse? Amen. Because when the rapture is gone, the only people who would answer and know what happened and can explain is the Christians that are left behind, are left behind who are not ready. And I tell you what, when you have answer and governments saying differently, you're going to be in conflict with the government. Right now you can't talk against Mr. Putin. You can't even say the war is wrong. You get 17 years. And the man who killed us, so many people. I listened to one of the reporters the other day. That man, I think he got 27 years. And he got let off if he go and fight. He's absolved from his, all his crime. The fifth seal focus on the martyrdom of the saints. Which apparently corresponds with the time of Satan's wrath. When he knows that he, was a, he has a short time. Believers, the devil knows that he has a short time. Yeah. And he will make war with the saints. Most of us can tell now and we feel that force of hell. Mm -hmm. Who keeps the commandments of God and have the testimony of Christ. What were these martyrs doing? Notice they cried and said, Lord, how long? The cruel mistreatment. Their cruel mistreatment cried out for vengeance just as Hebrew's blood cried out to God from the ground when he had been slain by his brother Abel. Cain. Amen. What is so striking about these saints is that though they have been killed for the word of God, their voice was not silent. And why? Because Matthew 5, 32, God, somebody came we don't know if there was ever such a man, a woman, you know. The guy came and they tried trying to trick Jesus. They said, Lord, Moses told us that if a man died without and his child as he was married, his brother should take him, take the, the woman and marry him. And he said, Lord, there were seven brothers. We don't even know if that was true. But that's what they, he came. He said, Lord, there were seven brothers. And all of one of them married to this woman, and he was he left her child as he died. And the second brother took the wife, married her, and she also died. The third brother married her. Bless God for this woman. Amen. Last, the seven brothers married a woman in heaven whose wife who's going to be the real the real husband. Which one of them is going to make the claim? Jesus said you do here because you know not the scriptures. Did you read what the word said? I am the, we only need I heard people said I don't want to go to heaven until I get married. Did you ever read where it said I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. Believers, I can tell you this. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody said, will there be sex in heaven? I don't know. I've not been there. Amen. No. Amen. If you take a look at this, you, um, you will notice in Revelation 6 2, the white horse, Revelation 6 4, the, the red horse, Revelation 6 verse 5 and, verses 5 and 6, the, 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 the black horse. Yeah. Balance, scales, huge inflation, oil and wine, spear. Notice last week we debate the oil and wine. 
being speared. The man, the, the horse, who was given the authority to do everything, damage, but not the oil and the wine. Now, in Revelation um, 6, 9, and 11, we have the martyrs crying out. How long? Hallelujah. And we're told, they are not, the time has not come until all the brethren who should be killed. It's Revelation 6. This is going to be one of the most devastating part of this judgment. The sun, the moon, live in violent opposition to humanity. Luke 21, 36. Watch therefore and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape the things that are coming on the earth. I'm going to ask you to try and send this to somebody to read, to listen to it. Press a button. There was, there, was, there was a song in Jamaica. Nikki, is it? That what we call press a button. No, it was when you trouble somebody, say press a button. Press a button. Touch a button. But if you think about it, touch a button. Just press a button. Glory to God. Believers, the six, the seventh scene in chapter 8, there was silence in heaven, but the sixth scene. The moon turned red, stars falling, sky receding like a scroll. Um, let me just give you this before I close. Because the Bible is such an important book. It's such an interesting book. Because in Revelation chapter Seven verses fourteen to seventeen. What did I say again? Seven. Okay. You remember, John was privileged to see some of these believers. They were all in white. Those souls that were dead, they were all in white. Speaking. Glory to God. They were in. They overcame because they, they believed in the blood of the Lamb. And then John saw them and he said, who are these? No man on earth could number them. He said, sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, these are they which came out of great fear. And I washed their robes made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God. They serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Verse 16. That's exactly how the martyrs were killed. They shall hunger no more. That's one of the torture they put on them. They shall hunger no more. Neither shall they thirst. Neither shall the sun. They'll put them because, you know, um, what do you call it? Temperature shift now. The El Nino and the El Nino. One part of the world is flooded. Another part devastated with sun. They shall hunger no more. Neither shall they thirst anymore. Neither shall the sun light on them. Nor any more. The Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Okay, time is gone. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Notice they call the Lord holy and true. The people that were crying out are wearing white robes, standing onto the altar. To be under the altar is to be covered in the blood of the Lamb. 
The seven letter is the one to have overcome or to the white road. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory Praise to God. God bless you. Next week, God's pure lives, we'll be looking at finishing on the, the souls under the heart. Then we'll be looking at some of the things that will be coming. Believers, these are things that are making me pray and begging God. Brother Eric, hallelujah. Lord, don't let me say it. I want to be a bride. Glory to God. I don't want when I leave this life, amen, anybody to say, praise God. As a little boy, they were debating on this multi-millionaire that died. And everybody was wondering, I wonder how much money he had. And all his friends, they were all men, men, rich people, they were wondering, how much had he had? So a little boy was standing there and he said, I know. No one took any notice of him, just. They were there talking. He said, I know. But he kept saying it till they just said, what are you talking about? He said, I know how much he left. So when they asked him how much, he said, everything he left. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Stand with me. Can I say a reminder for one of us tonight that there is nothing that you do for God that goes unnoticed. Solomon said, Every sunset brings me nearer to my eternal resting place. Joining that sweet communion with a million saved by grace. What a hallelujah morning! I'm the only person who knows that song. Not even Sister Dorcas. No. Praise be to God. Praise the Lord. See, Brother Harry knows some of the, 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 the modern songs that he knows about being a man and all of them. Hallelujah. But what a hallelujah for that. And Sister <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know why Annie knows all the songs? It's because at her workplace they play the radio and certain station all the time. So whether she like it or not, she has to praise the Lord. Help our sister. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's all. It's not Jesus God. Praise the Lord. Let's just hold the hands of the person. I came in so good to see you again. I'm praying that God brought you here tonight. I'm praying that God will touch your heart. There's so much in you that God wants to pull out. Thank you, Jesus. But you took the time to be here tonight. That's what matters. It's the Holy Spirit that was drawn. It's the Holy Spirit that has drawn. And for those of you that are out there and you've listened tonight, run for your life. Run, run, run for your life. Find a church or run for your life. Run for your life. Let's pray. Those of you who have been praying for the five people you've got your leaflets that you ask to put over your bed. You should five people that you pray for each day. Three minutes at least to pray to that. I want you to bear them up tonight. They're, on, they're not saved. Bear them up. Trust God. They're not coming because the devil is over them. But you got to break the chain. Father, tonight we thank you for the authority that you have given to us. That we can come before the throne of God. We praise you for the boldness that you have given to us to come boldly. And we will find help in the time of need. And as we come, we realize we do not come on our own merit. We come because Christ bid us to come. 
You said, come unto you all you that labor and are heavy laden. Come, you will give us rest. We should take our yoke upon us. Your yoke upon us. For your yoke is easy and your burden is light. May you speak to our hearts tonight. Glory to God. As a psalm and said, oh my Lord, prepare, prepare my soul for that great day. Prepare us, Lord. God, you're coming again. We don't want anything to hinder us. So open our hearts tonight. For those that we have been praying for, we bring them before your throne. God, we come against the forces that are stopping them from coming to you. We break those chains carry your life. We, the word of God tells us if the gospel be hid, it is hid from them that are lost. Of whom the God of this world have blinded their eyes. They have blinded our son's eyes. They have blinded our daughter's eyes, our husbands, our wives, our mothers, our fathers, our siblings. Lord, our grandchildren. Father, we come right now against those forces of darkness. We declare war on them tonight. We command that they be released just as Peter was released from prison. Hey, Lord, as Saul, Paul, and Silas were released from jail, we command the release right now. That they will walk out of darkness and walk into the light. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We declare your name tonight. Thank you, Father. Be with your people. Let this church and your people all over experience revival and renewal. We thank you, dear God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for those of you who have joined us tonight. We were so delighted to have you. And we pray that somehow you would have just, this message would resonate in your spirit. Send it to somebody. Not for us. Not for us to get numbers. But because you want somebody to get saved. God bless you. Amen.